wing from the North East Bronze State, Professor Gambo Ibrahim is here with us. Also on the panel, we have a notable and fearless boy, senior broadcast journalist on AIT, Dr. Amechi Anakwe. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, to unveil the content, we have uh, a content director himself, former director, Public Affairs NBC, as moderator, Malam Awalu Sali, is live and here with us. Let me very specially acknowledge joining us virtually, and you will see their faces, all the faces of their representatives shortly. Dr. Mansui Liman, Director General, FRCN. Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, Director General, NTA. Osita Okichuku, Director General, Voice of Nigeria. Namdi Jamenze, Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Press Council. All the administrators uh, who are joining us virtually are all recognized. Please a round of applause for them. We also recognize ambassadors, captains of industry, CEOs, and civil society giants, representatives of ministries also joining us here, distinguished staff of the NBC, gentlemen of the vibrant Nigerian press, very, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. NBC partners today with the event being covered by FRCN, NTA, AIT, Channels Television, TVC, ITV, Women FM, and other stations live. A round of applause for them, please. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Helen Kayla, in one of her quotes, says, alone we can do so little, and together we can do so much. That's why we're gathered here together today, here and there, virtually, as good hearts and good heads, to join the NBC uh, virtually and live, you know, because of the situation. We have now obeyed the new normal to ensure that things are done right. And uh, the grace, this occasion, virtually, we have a lot of people and we have a few gathered here. Every year, the Commission painstakingly examines contemporary content and current of social political developments in our country. This started exactly five years ago. 2015, we had Mr. Shola Taylor as the guest. We had in 2016 Atayu Jagan Professor as the guest speaker. In 2017, we had Professor Ati Somi and the presence of the eminence Sultan of Sokoto at the event. In 2018, it was all about ethno cultural divide. And Professor Ibrahim Gambari, who is presently Chief of Staff to the President, handled that lecture. 2019 saw Professor Ahmed Adam Okene of crisis, emergencies, and disasters. Your Excellencies, Honorable Minister, members of the board, chairman of the board, members of the National Assembly, ministers, commissioners, members of the academia, Lord spiritual and temporal, highnesses, future leaders, students who may also be joining us virtually, and distinguished guests, welcome once again to the sixth edition of the NBC Annual Lecture 2020. Take a moment to say hello to somebody, but do it in social distance measure. Greet someone in your language. Don't touch. If you touch, you may be arrested. Thank you very much. Welcome. I must say it's an honor and privilege to be here. My name is Tokwe Ujime of Africa's largest radio network, Radio Nigeria. If you clap for me, I'll be glad. Thank you very much. Let me, at this point, welcome the gentleman to give us the welcome address. And uh, timely, we will make this event. As you know, it's uh, virtually also being covered. Alaji Ikra Aliu Bilbis will be coming up shortly. Let me inform you that, um, as I said earlier, a lot of people are watching online. And for those who are joining us virtually, you have opportunity to send your questions in writing. Just send questions um, on the platforms wherever you are joining us from on the social media. Your questions will be attended to, and this lecture will be one you will not want to forget in a hurry. Now, let's welcome to give the welcome address representing Alaji Ikra Ayubis, Board Chairman of the Commission. Please, a round of applause for Barrister Bamidele Aluko.
morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is a welcome addressed by Alaiti Aliu Ikarabin Bish, the Chairman Board of National Broadcasting Commission, MBC Abuja, who is unavoidably absent today. And my name is Barista Sali Bamidili Abuku. I stand in this place to read his uh, address. Now, the Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, Elijah Lai Mohammed, ably represented by our own, my colleague at the board, Augustus Babadi Ajibola, Director of Entertainment and Creative Service in the Ministry of Information and Culture. The Acting Director General of MBC, Professor Armstrong Dachaba. Our erudite keynote speaker, Professor Chinyere Okuna, and our well resources discontent. Member of the MBC board who are watching us on virtual, and member of the MBC management that are here present and those that are watching us on virtual. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, distinguished stakeholders and other participants joining us via the virtual platform. I'm delighted and especially welcome you to this abridged celebration of the 28th anniversary of the National Broadcasting Commission, which we are commemorating with the annual lecture. This is the sixth in the series. We are not able to gather this year to celebrate the giant's industry strike as we have undertaken over the last one year. This is, there's a Nigeria proverb that says, when Elisa dropped from a high height, it knocks its head in self appraise In spite of the disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, I think it is just fear, and we pat ourselves on the back, first for surviving the scourge, and secondly, for the strategic role the broadcast media is playing in educating the Nigeria people on the pandemic and in dousing its effect. The media is playing a key role in entrenching through democracy and broadcasting in strategic in the value chain. In addition, the idea of sustainable development and governance will be a mirage without an effective media. Mass mobilization is also dependent on effective media usage. So it is important and advantageous that we support the National Broadcasting Commission in furthering and sustaining the professional and citizen-focused broadcast media. The digitization of the broadcast industry, one of the major projects of government through the Commission, is on course. The Board has charged management to come up with a new map road. This, I assure you, will soon be released to the public. The Commission has achieved laudable goals for the industry through 28 years of grooming. There's no doubt that there are still challenges to be surmounted in the industry. I therefore utilize this opportunity to call on all stakeholders to close ranks and put our best foot forward in developing an industry that is resilient and can stand the test of time. We may be lagging behind some other countries that came into broadcasting long after Nigeria, but I trust the Nigeria spirit that we can overcome obstacles and take back our proper pride of place in the immediate future. Some of the solutions that will be provided at this annual lecture will be useful in helping us to reach our regard, our desired goals. I thank you for making out time from your very busy, important schedules to celebrate with the MBC. I will leave the podium now for the erudite scholar and this discussant to whet your appetite with the well research ideas and discussions that will follow. I pray that Almighty Allah will give us the wisdom and strength for more successes in the future. Amen. Thank you and God bless. Uh, we've been, we're now talking more about multiple pandemics. We think about, obviously, the COVID-19 pandemic, but also the financial crisis. We're also talking about the mental health crisis. We're even looking at things like sex abuse, um, home abuse, sex abuse among young children is a very, very big problem. But in spite of the size and the enormity of this problem, the fundamentals, in my opinion, must remain the fundamentals. We cannot lose sight of the fundamentals and how that affects how we think, how we behave, how we organize as a country. 
And it's also very important that we realize that because we're in a black nation, we need to understand that there are certain things that we as black people, and Nigeria being the number one black, black country in the world, we need to understand some things that we must take into uh, careful account when it comes to our health as a nation. And I think nothing is more important than the immune system and COVID-19 has brought that to light, probably more than anything else, that the importance of your immune system is critical, not just when it comes to infectious type diseases, it's critical when it comes to brain health, it's critical when it comes to other forms, other conditions. And I'm going to quickly look at these things and kind of show you what it is. There are two main things that COVID-19 has pointed out, immune incompetence and immune dysfunction. And I'm going to show you that with a diagram real quick. So here we have in front of us a diagram, and there are three stages. You see the numbers on the top. What COVID-19, I mean, let's start with the first part, stage one. So face masks prevent against the COVID-19 coming upon your body and your person. So you face masks, social distancing, all the things that we're supposed to do, but that, that's just the first step. Many, thankfully, only 80% of those who contract the virus um, develop mild symptoms. Thankfully, 80%. <laughs> develop the, the mild symptoms like cough, catar, loss of smell, loss of taste, loss of um, sore throat. And thankfully, about within a week, that's all over. Now, those who are immunocompromised, or those who don't have a, a robust enough immune system, st progress to stage two, where it goes, gets to the lungs, and it causes all kinds of problems from chest pain to fever and malaise. Fortunately, some of these still recover. Now, the worst part is really when it comes to, when it becomes systemic, and we see that up there, 6%. 6% have this systemic uh, problem. And, and COVID-19 is called the great invader, and it's not without reason, because it attacks so many parts of the body. And it's not really the virus itself that causes the damage. And this is what brings us to the importance of the immune system. It's your, it's a person's own immune system that, volume somebody says I need more volume okay it is the person's is that better it is the person's own immune system that causes the damage not the virus itself it's a, just like a matchstick is not what causes a, a total brush fire it's a person and so that's very very important that we need to look at um, let me go back here so I, I show some some uh, nutrients at the bottom here, vitamin C and zinc, vitamin C and zinc, we're seeing that these are so, so important. Uh, the whole thing about the hydroxychloroquine, you all heard about it, there's this huge uh, controversy about it. It's not the hydroxychloroquine that does the work, it is the zinc that does the work of destroying the virus. What hydroxychloroquine does is that it opens the door for the zinc to do what it needs to do. And so it's unfortunate that there's been such a big rage about it. In Nigeria, until recently, they were still using hydroxychloroquine and zinc in their isolation centers. So I want to talk about dealing with this last stage, which is the death and the system being uh, COVID-19 being a systemic invader. I feel the, the nutrient that is particularly important to us black people that uh, I don't think we're giving enough attention to. This nutrient, it regulates over 2,000 genes in the body, which means that it affects a lot of things. Most especially immune function, uh, bone strength, muscle strength, and a few other things. Those who are deficient in this gene, I'm um, sorry, excuse me, those who are deficient in this nutrient, remember we says it affects over 2,000 genes. Those who are deficient in this nutrient tend to have, tend to have lower back pain. Uh, women have more fibroids, frequent malaria. I know patients who, if they keep telling me they have malaria every month, I say check your but your nutrient status, your levels of that nutrient, and that nutrient is vitamin D3. Remember I said I spelled specifically D3, and you say D2. And what vitamin D3 does in this whole COVID-19 palaver is that it addresses what is known as the cytokine storm. Everybody say that with me: cytokine storm. That's good. Again, cytokine storm. Meta, better. And what studies around the world have, have found out is that those who have the lowest levels of vitamin D, this is around the world, those who have the lowest levels of vitamin D are the ones more likely to have the more severe form of the, of the disease. 
and they are more likely to die. And we're talking about over 95%. So back to this picture, what vitamin D has been shown to do is that it helps to suppress, helps to rip. Uh, we've been, we're now talking more about multiple pandemics. We think about, obviously, the COVID-19 pandemic, but also the financial crisis. We're also talking about the mental health crisis. We're even looking at things like sex abuse, um, home abuse, sex abuse among young children. It's a very, very big problem. But in spite of the size and the enormity of this problem, the fundamentals, in my opinion, must remain the fundamentals. We cannot lose sight of the fundamentals and how that affects how we think, how we behave, how we organize as a country. And it's also very important that we realize that because we're in a black nation, we need to understand that there are certain things that we as black people, and Nigeria being the number one black, black country in the world, we need to understand some things that we must take into uh, careful account when it comes to our health as a nation. And I think nothing is more important than the immune system and COVID-19 has brought that to light, probably more than anything else that the importance of your immune system is critical, not just when it comes to infectious tip diseases, it's critical when it comes to brain health, it's critical when it comes to other forms, other conditions. And I'm going to quickly look at these things and kind of show you what it is. There are two main things that COVID-19 has pointed out, immune incompetence and immune dysfunction. And I'm going to show you that with a diagram real quick. So here we have in front of us a diagram, and there are three stages, you see the numbers on the top. What COVID-19, I mean, let's start with the first part, stage one. So face masks prevent against the COVID-19 coming upon your body and your person. So you face masks, social distancing, all the things that we're supposed to do, but that, that's just the first step. Many, thankfully, only 80% of those who contract the virus um, develop mild symptoms. Thankfully, 80% <laughs> develop the mild symptoms like cough, catar, loss of smell, loss of taste, loss of um, sore throat. And thankfully, about within a week, that's all over. Now, those who are immunocompromised, or those who don't have a, a robust enough immune system, progress to stage two, where it gets to the lungs, and it causes all kinds of problems, from chest pain to fever and malaise. Fortunately, some of these still recover. Now, the worst part is really when it comes to, when it becomes systemic, and we see that up there, 6%. 6% have this systemic uh, problem. And, and COVID-19 is called the great invader and it's not without reason because it attacks so many parts of the body. And it's not really the virus itself that causes the damage. And this is what brings us to the importance of the immune system. It's, your, it's a person's own immune system. That volume, somebody says I need more volume. Okay, it is the person's, is that better? It is a person's own immune system that causes the damage, not the virus itself. Just like a matchstick is not what causes a total brush fire, it is a person's. And so that's very, very important that we need to look at. Um, let me go back here. So I, see, I show some, some uh, nutrients at the bottom here. Vitamin C and zinc, vitamin C and zinc, we're seeing that these are so, so important. Uh, the whole thing about the hydroxychloroquine, you all heard about it, there's this huge uh, controversy about it. It's not the hydroxychloroquine that does the work, it's the zinc that does the work of destroying the virus. What hydroxychloroquine does is that it opens the door for the zinc to do what it needs to do. And so it's unfortunate that there's been such a big rage about it. In Nigeria, until recently, they were still using hydroxychloroquine and zinc in their isolation centers. So I want to talk about dealing with this last stage, which is the death and the system being uh, COVID-19 being a systemic invader. I feel the, the nutrient that is particularly important to us black people that uh, I don't think we're giving enough attention to. This nutrient, it regulates over 2,000 genes in the body, which means that it affects a lot of things, most especially immune function, uh, bone strength, muscle strength, and a few other things. Those who are deficient in this gene um, so, excuse me, those who are deficient in these nutrients, remember we said it affects over 2,000 genes. Those who are deficient in these nutrients tend to have, tend to have lower back pain. Uh, women have more fibroids, 
frequent malaria. I know patients who, if they keep telling me they have malaria every month, I say check your, your nutrient status, your levels of that nutrient. And that nutrient is vitamin D3. Remember I said, I said specifically D3, and you say D2. And what vitamin D3 does in this whole COVID-19 palaver is that it addresses what is known as the cytokine storm. Everybody say that with me. Cytokine storm. That's good. Again, cytokine storm. Meta, better. And what studies around the world have, have found out is that those who have the lowest levels of vitamin D, this is around the world, those who have the lowest levels of vitamin D are the ones more likely to have the more severe form of the, of the disease. And they are more likely to die. And we're talking about over 95%. So back to this picture. What vitamin D has been shown to do is that it helps to suppress, helps to rip. Who is at risk of the deficiency? <laughs> well, if you're looking, I think everybody here is dark skinned. So let me, let me just put it this way. If you're not a farmer, if you're not working out in the fields for long hours on day, in, in a day, if you're not a street hawker, you are most likely, if you are not cognizant of this fact, you are most likely to be deficient. And so, um, some of these, I've mentioned some of these other things. Diseases are also uh, a big factor, diabetes. The, I, I point to the big four, I'm <laughs> trying to rush. I point to the big four because we're looking at hypertension, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, and of course, if you have a lung condition. These are the big four that make you more susceptible to a severe form of the disease. If you're not out in the sun regularly, please go and check your vitamin D levels. It's a very, very good bet that you're low in vitamin D. I mean, I work with executives and almost without exception, they have a low in vitamin D. Why? They go from AC to AC to AC to AC. All right, so we need to be aware of this. In conclusion, I want to say this, that this may not be the last pandemic. We hope it is, but we can only hope it may not be the last one. There will be other problems, there will be other infections, there will be other... virus, when the vaccine comes, and hopefully we'll get to it, then everybody, and it will be an add-on, it will not be the be-all, end-all, but the immune system will always be here to stay. So with that, I want to leave you. Again, I want to say thank you to the NBC for this opportunity. God bless. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I'm reading this address on behalf of our new Minister of Information and Culture, Alaji Lai Mohamed. Um, Mr. Chairman, ably presented by my friend, Barista Bamidela Luko. My good friend, the acting TG of NBC, Professor Armstrong Yachaba, distinguished keynote speaker and discussants, ladies and gentlemen. Permit me to first congratulate the National Broadcasting Commission on its 28th anniversary. Indeed, NBC has come of age from infancy to poverty and what I will call full maturity, but is still growing in terms of knowledge base, infrastructure, and acquiring cutting edge technology in broadcasting. However, it is always an honor and privilege for me to discuss anything that has to do with communication, more so when it is broadcasting. A medium that has translated from an elitist parapalenia to that of a people's platform for verbal and visual expression. Since the colonial days, broadcasting through redefusion has always played a pivotal role between the, gov the government and the government. Ever since, it has remained the umbilical cord between the government and the government. Do we agree with me that these are trying times? But the ultimate challenge of the time is that of the innate ability of man to delve into his inner will and create ingenuity to transform his surroundings into a friendly and habitable environment. More so, the COVID-19 pandemic has made what is trying times to be more engaging. It must be to find an everlasting panacea to deal with this virus in temporary times before a permanent solution is found. 
The task of MBC in regulating our dynamic and vibrant a policy making network that has the people at its ultimate beneficiaries. With large, it is greatest good for the greatest number of people. In this respect, monopolistic tendencies should not be allowed to drive the higher echelon of our broadcasting industry. I'm yet to see any kind or country where the very month allowed to detect consumer and the industry crisis pays an even disposable income. That is the trust of our abhorrence of exclusivity as it's against the natural law of nature to allow unbridled capitalism and unfettered domination. That is why we have antitrust laws against monopoly companies because might is not right and that material strength should not be allowed to the detriment of the larger good of the society. The federal government is currently implementing the reform of the broadcasting industry. It is therefore our expectation that these changes will revolutionize broadcasting in Nigeria. As part of the reforms, it has become necessary to effect certain amendments to the broadcasting code. The amendments were initiated by a federal executive council decision, which reviewed the 2019 elections and several recommendations that were approved by Mr. President to reposition MBC to perform its regulatory role better. The approval necessitated some amendments in the code and the act. The amendments are mostly in the areas of political broadcasting, local content, coverage of emergencies, advertising, and anti-competitive behavior. There are obviously lots of positive and desirable outcomes for the new broadcasting code. The provisions on exclusivity and monopoly, this antitrust provision will boost local content and local industry due to laws prohibiting exclusive use of rights by broadcasters whose intent is to create monopolies and hold us uh, hostage. At implementation, it will encourage open access to premium content. I must explain that this provision is not new in Nigeria. Broadcasting exclusivity was, uh, was disallowed at a certain time in the history of broadcasting. I recall multi choice sub licensing EPL, English Premier League, matches to other local operators in Nigeria. I also recall ITV engaging several local operators on sub licensing the EPL when they got the rights, sub licensing and rights sharing with opportunities. To also gain traction and revenue for their services. More than this, the law prohibiting backlog of advertising debts will definitely promote sustainability for the station owners and producers of content. More than anything else, the law on registration of web broadcasting right, grants the country the opportunity to regulate negative foreign broadcasts that can help us as a nation. Such harm could be security, protection for minors and of human dignity, economic fraud, privacy, and etc. The provisions of responsibility of broadcast stations to devote their time to the national emergency obviously mandates mandates Teresa and pay TV scanners to make their services available to Nigerians at time of national emergency like this for their education and enlightenment. We shall always count on your support and understanding of Nigerian people. Bokasi means a major, if not the most critical tool for national development. Our expectation is that Bokasi should be used to demonstrate governance in Nigeria, good governance in Nigeria. We should avoid the temptation of letting our emotions get the better of us by being perverse of hate speech and divisive rhetoric that is not in our culture. We are known as civilized and controlled people. With ethical values that emphasizes tolerance, chastity, understanding, temperance, and respect for other people. Every policy initiative should evolve out of deep and cerebral thinking, critical analysis, and qualitative and qualitative ratio of what is good for the majority of our people no more, no less. It is our duty to curb on brutal passions and rapacious instinct of those who think one is all. A tree can never make a forest, and our collective will in terms of creating competitive And continue to find ways to support you to serve your roles. The recent license fee waiver and discount is one of such. The bonus is on you to provide this show of support by government by promoting the national interest and not self interest always. Finally, political broadcasting remains a big challenge in Nigeria. Broadcasting sessions allow a, of, a lot of inciting and unguided comments. This is dangerous for our collective growth as a, as a country. Why do I allow ethnic affiliations and religious by country? 
to preclude our sense of nationhood and unity as a people? Why should we allow falsehood, misleading claims, and fake news to thrive? This must stop in national interest. We are key concern of the destiny of the country, and we know that hold our national destiny in our hands. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Representative of the a very good morning. Thank you for being with the Nigerian Television Authority. The United States of Africa. Thank you, thank you. The National Broadcasting.